Alpharetta's June singing celebrates 142 years. While most of us are not familiar with this type of singing, at one time it was one of the biggest events of the year. It has several names, Fasola, Sacred Harp, and Shape Note Singing. There is no audience since everybody sings, and the only instrument is the God-given human voice, hence the term Sacred Harp. The singing is four-part harmony. It's uh, an a cappella music, and we have bass, alto, treble, and a tenor section is where the listeners sit. And we go through and we sing the fossil laws, which is an old English scale system. Uh, we have fa, so, la, fa, so, la, mi, fa. We have the whole octave, except the fa and the so and the la are doubled. And we recognize the, the fossil laws by their shape. So originally it was a teaching tool. It's still a teaching tool for new songs, but we sing through uh, the notes out of tradition and out of a teaching tool for new singers, uh, and then we'll go back and sing the poetry or the text. The Sacred Harp is actually a Georgia book compiled in 1844 by two Georgians, B.F. White and E.J. King, and uh, it's actually one of the last four note of uh, the Fossil Law books compiled. Uh, the earliest book compiled with the note system was 1798. And my family has been involved in Sacred Heart uh, way before I can remember. Uh, all the DeLong brothers who are now deceased and, and some of their descendants who migrated from South Carolina, we know that they were involved in Sacred Heart or, or uh, shape note singing uh, in South Carolina and they migrated here to Fulton County and their children uh, from their great-grandfather and their great-great-grandfather uh, picked up the system and, uh, and carried it on in the same tradition and my grandmother passed it on to me and she married a singer and uh, she carried me to a Sacred Heart singing when I was less than a year old and I've never stopped going. I just love it. I love the sound. I love the people. I've become very active in the Sacred Heart Company and the involvement in the, in the publication of the Sacred Heart Songbook to keep it preserved and to keep it going. And I've taught singing schools uh, in this tradition all across the, the United States. We have a, a handful of secular songs in our book, and there are secular songs written in the shape note tradition, but our book, The Sacred Harp, has maintained sacred songs uh, for the most part and uh, we use words by Isaac Watts, uh, John Newton, which uh, penned the poetry to Amazing Grace, and some of the great uh, Doddridge, some of the great other hymn writers who came from uh, England and other parts of Europe. Uh, some of the tunes that we use were actually old sea shanties and other ballads that came out of Europe, and the, the immigrants who came here wrote down those sea shanties and ballads that they uh, knew from Germany, from France, from England. And then religious texts were put to those songs and uh, are maintained in our book. An arboretum is a collection of trees. The first arboretums were started by Egyptian pharaohs who collected trees and plants from their many voyages. Today, arboretums celebrate native trees and plants from the local area. Arboretums create awareness and help educate visitors. Leadership North Fulton just finished their latest arboretum, which is located at Webbridge Park. Thank you for coming today. Uh, when the Alfreda Arboretum had the idea to do arboretums at the city parks and and we got permission for that. We started with Wills and did Cogburn next and this was in my mind Webridge was the pièce de résistance because it's the jewel in Alpharetta. It's a beautiful beautiful park. This park has special meaning to me because Jim Payne and Chuck Martin in 1996 asked me to chair a bond initiative that built the new police headquarters the middle of West Side Parkway and, and bought the property for this this uh, land and it passed with 82% of the vote. And that's how I got involved in the community. 
And I hope that this is a start for y'all that went through this Leadership North Fulton program to get more involved in the, in the community. I know the project's a very important part of your, your class project, but I gotta tell you, the most important part is that you got to see the community. You got to learn about how the city works, how healthcare works, how law enforcement works, uh, just all aspects of our community. And uh, I would say this, get involved. I mean, this hopefully is a start for somebody standing here that will get more involved in the community. This park has always been very special. It was designed from scratch to be primarily a passive park. Two thirds of this park is green space, trails for walking. And we have a very active park component with soccer and softball. One thing that we've been wanting to add for many years is an educational component. With the help of the Arboretum Board and all of the volunteers of the Arboretum and the Tree Commission and all the rest of the people involved in this project, we have now identified and specified many trees native to Georgia and this area that when people are on these trails, they can identify these trees, know what they're looking at. We expect a lot of people on their own to look at this. We offer this availability to classrooms to come out and it's going to be a wonderful learning experience for everybody, young and old alike. Um, on Monday, a gentleman walked in the door and started asking me, you know, about what we took for donations and I was asking very specific questions about the kinds of donations. and. Um, eventually said, well, well, do you take toys? And I said, oh yes, we have lots of toys. We'd, we'd love to have some donations. And he said he had $18,000 worth of toys that he had been selling online and he closed the business. He asked if we could send a truck to pick them up and we, we went and it took three truckloads to bring them all um, here. And they're just beautiful toys. They're all brand new, still in the boxes and everything. And um, he wanted to donate it to a group that would help people with it. A toy angel visits the Hope Store.